guys. Um, thanks for joining me for your yoga practice this, well, whatever time of day it might be for you. <laughs> um, this is peanut butter. And I'll doggy Buddha might join us a little bit later. Um, just real quick, so if you're not as familiar with the yin yoga practice, it's a really slow, deep, especially hip opening um, practice. So we'll be holding the postures, um, just kind of like gravity fed um, for, you know, most of them three to five minutes or so with a little counter pose, about one minute counter pose in between, a little bit of warm up movement. Um, so that might, it might be most comfortable that you're prepared with some props. So like I said before in the other videos, if you have um, bricks, you're welcome to just have them nearby just in case you want to use them or like thick books or anything that might supplement for that. Um, even little like throw pillows, you could bring a couple of those over. If you have a strap or a rag or something that you like, that might come in handy. It's, they're, it's not necessary, but um, I've got this little bolster thing. You might have a bigger one. You might not have one, um, or like body, you know, those big body pillow things. Um, but you could also just take a blanket or a nice thick like beach towel or even two stacked up together and then roll it up like this. Um, and then I have a second blanket, so I'm gonna keep both of those here nearby. Um, and then I have a blanket rolled up, or I'm sorry, folded up underneath my seat right here to be more comfortable um, and to help the pelvis to come forward, right? You don't want the pelvis jumping back. So that's just real quick kind of in preparation for today's practice. And if you want to just quick pause and gather some stuff, go ahead. And then when you're ready, um, come to a comfortable cross-legged seated position and close your eyes. And take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Cleansing breath out the mouth. Trying to let your your day go or maybe your night's rest go, you know, maybe you're just kind of just barely waking up, right? Maybe it's the, the end of a long day, maybe it's the middle of the day, whatever it might be for you, just gather it in with an inhale. Let it all out with an exhale. One more time, breathing in through the nose. Out the mouth. Now just gently seal the lips, the tongue relax, jaw relax. Let the breath flow in and out of the nose. And so just see if by shifting your attention to your breath, you kind of automatically started to breathe a little bit deeper, a little bit fuller. And just take it a little, take it a little further to the Samavritti Pranayama, which is like equal part breathing um, or four part, four part breath. I think it's also called. Um, so essentially, I'd like you just to imagine a square, what a square looks like, right? And so what we're gonna do is inhale for the length, like you're drawing the top part of the square, and then you hold the breath, and that hold time draws the second part of the square. And then we'll exhale the breath, making the bottom part of the square, and then of course, we'll hold the breath again, that retention in between the exhale and the inhale to make that last line of the square, the last side of the square, and then we'll make another square. And we're, we're going to make several squares together with our breath, inhales, exhales with retention in between. Okay, so, and at any point, if you feel like the length that I'm guiding you through is too long, you could shorten it, just make it equal. So if we're breathing to the count of three, hold three, exhale three, hold three. Um, and as, as we maybe start to make a little bit bigger squares, right, feel free to stick with whatever count um, works for you. So hopefully that makes sense. And let's begin to eat cleansing back in through the nose. You can just let this one out the mouth one last time. Now you can just seal the lips and you know, inhale for three, two, one, hold, three, two, one. Exhale, three, 
two, one, hold, three, two, one, inhale, three, two, one, hold, exhale, three, two, one, hold, inhale. <laughs> I think I just messed it up, so three, two, you got it. So inhale, three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, exhale, three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, inhale, keep going on your own. Feel free to make bigger squares at any time. Whatever it is that you take your next inhale and have still a slight pause in between the breath, but not as long of a hold. And then just let the breath flow out a little bit more naturally. And start to come into a nice rhythmic breath. So that practice, that breathing practice, helping to improve the capacity of our lungs definitely an important thing that we should be um, focusing on our immune system and capacity of our lungs as you know we just try to stay strong and healthy um, yeah in this time right? so with the breath flowing eyes closed bring your hands to your heart bow your head gently in just taking a moment to thank yourself for showing up to your mat Just let your hands land back down in your lap. I'm just going to share a little reading um, I did share in the last class that I just um, posted. So it might be a repeat for you, but that's okay because it's a good one. It's called Two Wolves. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope. Serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person. The grandson thought about this for a moment, and then he asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Just acknowledging, right, especially in this time in our world and everything that's happening, it's easy to feed that wolf of fear, right, and anger and just negativity. And so can we feed the 
see that in a wolf, even if just for this time or not, so they can we really let that be a focus um, and just generate some good compassion and faith and hope and love. Okay, so uh, when you're ready, we'll come into our first position. So you just take your feet forward. And straighten out your legs just for a moment. Give your legs a little bounce just because you had bent knees there for a few moments. And then when you're ready, we're coming into our butterfly pose. So you're going to have your heels. In our yin variation, the heels are actually a little bit farther away. Um, so when you're ready, you're going to tuck your hands underneath your ankles. And you're just going to round your back down to the floor. And rounding your back, letting your head drop down to the floor. So a couple things you can be setting up on that blanket. Um, you can prop something underneath your knees if you need. And um, you can bring your feet in or at, you know in a little bit more if that's most comfortable for you. You can stack your fists to place your forehead or you know use some props or something if you want to support your head. We'll hold here for a few minutes. So. Um, make sure that you're as comfortable as you can possibly be. Um, comfortable, you know, it's, you might still be feeling a nice strong sensation, um, good sensation of stretch, not pain, of course, good pain, bad pain, and the, the difference there. Um, and if you have, in any of these forward folds that we may practice here, have low back issues, you wanna make sure that you focus on a straight spine. Okay, pelvis is coming forward and you're just coming forward and you're not keeping your chest open and not rounding the back. So flexion is something you've been told not to do. And your back then, please don't do it here with me right now. Um, and otherwise, just, that's it. Just be here, just breathe. Try to relax your shoulders as much as you can. Jog. So it's really nice, nice practice to just really close your eyes and allow yourself to just be with yourself. Time for the pose so I don't keep you guys in for too long. So I've got two more minutes here in this position. And allow the breath to really pull down into the hips, the lower back, the inner thighs. And you're trying to make this shift. Clicking off that fight or flight response that we're so often engaged in. And so you're just kind of trying, almost like you're trying to tone the parasympathetic nervous system. Gently folding forward and just breathing and just being. Last 30 seconds here, so that'll be about time for me to just a couple more full deep breaths and really breathing deeply and consciously. Okay, so then just take your feet flat, a little wider than your knees, 
knees and lean back on your hands and just let your knees drop side to side and then gentle windshield <laughs> wiper so you feel better. Have fun. <laughs> just windshield wiper in my dog's face. <laughs> Good. Okay. So from here, inhale and come up. Bring your right heel back in. Um, adjust your seat in your mount. And then you're going to take your, I'm sorry, I'm going to do mirror image too. So yeah, right foot in, then you're going to take that left leg and you're going to bring it back behind you. Right, and so your right knee is kind of pointing out to the side um, a little bit. And then when you're ready, you're going to turn toward your, I got to remember that I'm mirroring you guys, sorry. So now you're going to turn toward your right hip and you're going to start to rotate around. And just see any amount that it feels good to fold forward. Just kind of folding down. And then you stretch through your left lower back. Adjusting the knees a little bit this way or that way to make it the most comfortable for your body. You can always right, find a little, use your blanket as a little pillow or, you know, use your hands in any way for support or maybe just stay up on your elbows and forearms. If you want to start to increase the stretch a little bit, depending on your body, you get into the IT band a little bit more, your, your quad you can just start to scooch your left foot a little bit more right over to that, like more off of your mat, back behind you, kind of just adjusting the feet a little bit. So you can kind of play with it, see what feels good for you. Slowly start to bring yourself back up. Just take your time as you do. Just so you're feeling nice and relaxed. And then um, we'll just switch sides so you can bring that, that left foot, just wrap it back around. Swing your right leg back behind you. Then when you're ready, you're going to turn toward your left leg and, and just kind of start to twist over and fold down. And again, so anytime if you wanna, after a little while here, maybe you scooch your back foot um, off of your mat a little bit more. You didn't know roosters don't only crow in the morning. <laughs> they crow all the time. And this dude is crowing at 5.04 p.m. all the time.
position, then it's really easy to just relax, but um, it's, a, it's also really easy to just kind of let your mind start to wander so you're not distracted with movement. Um, so if you're kind of struggling with that at all, just keep bringing your attention back. Like, okay, can I relax again? Where can I do another body scan? Where am I holding tension? Can I just really be in this moment? Push yourself up when you're ready. And take your time. Good, and then you can just slowly let that back leg wrap its way all the way around. Okay, so now we'll take our shoelace pose. So you're gonna bring, sneak this bottom foot, knee, um, left foot over to the right hip, outside right hip, and the right foot is gonna step over to the outside right, your left hip. So then you're gonna keep pulling that heel in and kind of out. For me personally, I like to lean forward onto my hands and pick my bum up off the ground and just kind of wiggle a little bit. I feel like my knees really are able to more properly align at center. And then I sit my hips back down. And sometimes when you sit your hips back down, um, that right hip is like, no thank you. <laughs> so that's okay, it's totally normal. You just wanna encourage that hip to go down. This is definitely one of those postures that might be really nice to have a blanket underneath of you, right? And so you're trying to get your heels about the same distance away from the hips on either side. So just like your cow face pose in your asana practice, um, in the in practice, they call this one shoe face. So um, you should be feeling in your hips. <laughs> And so as long as you're feeling it, then you're good to go. As long as you've got some sensation, then you're good, 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 we're solid. And um, you can stay right here and maybe just put your hands on the bottoms of the feet. I feel like it's just really nice and grounding. Or you could, or your ankles, if you're kind of grossed out by the bottoms of your feet, you could touch your ankles, that's kind of grounding too. Um, it's just anywhere that's comfortable, and if you prefer, then you could come to an arm variation with me. And we'll take our eagle arms um, as a variation today. So you'll take your right arm on the bottom, and you'll take your left arm on the top, and cross your arms. Yep, and then you're just gonna let the backs of the hands start to come toward one another, and then try to sneak the palms around to touch the best that you can. So if you're working toward this and not really finding it, um, or you know maybe you can get a thumb and pinky connection, right? But if it's just not really working out, maybe try holding opposite shoulder. That's a really nice um, variation. You can just kind of maybe start to lift those elbows up, see how that feels, right? And if you're here, you can start to lift those elbows up, see how that feels in this variation. Breathe into your upper back and that space between your shoulder blades right behind your heart. And take an inhale, then you have an option here to exhale. Start to come forward, maybe bringing your elbows toward your knees or onto you know, some sort of support in front of you. If you wanna put something there, maybe you can keep going in front of the knees to get the elbows, fingers down toward the ground. But keep your butt down, right? down back to your ankles and your feet. Take one more breath here, trying to really relax the grip of the hips. And then when you're ready, you can just release slowly, leaning back onto your back and just shake out your legs for a second like we did at the beginning of class. Okay, so now it's the right leg that goes underneath you. 
and then I feel that leg that steps outside of the knee, and then it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going toward that outer hip, right? And again, maybe we pop ourselves up here, wiggle, 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 sit back down, scooch that bottom heel. So again, make sure you're not fitting on your bottom heel. Get it out of the way, try to just keep adjusting, right? Um, I didn't say it on the other side, I'm sorry, but you could also modify this position. If it's not okay for your knee, you could also take that foot forward and pull this heel over more, and then maybe fold forward there, so. But otherwise, both knees bent, maybe sitting up on something. And my hips are especially tight, so just, just be patient, you know. Maybe your hips are way, way separated. Maybe you're having trouble even getting them in line. That's totally fine. Maybe your knees just touch together, easy peasy, and you need to focus on bringing your feet out a little bit wider um, to get to find a sensation that you know, meets um, your body and the edge that's right for, for you to actually feel you know, an experience of stretch here or opening. Okay, so then um, if you want to take that arm variation with me, you can take your arms out and let your left arm go under and your right arm go on top. Again, opposite shoulder hold or back to hands touch and fingers loop around. And then when you're ready, you can just start to lift those elbows up, draw the low belly in slightly. And then if for when, you would like to start to go there. You can bring those elbows forward. Maybe even elbows down. Keep those hips down. So I always talk about, I like to think about the, um, the hips like fists, right? Gripping down there. And so just like when you're gripping with your fists, what do you need to do to release the grip? You just gotta let go, okay? So, can we find some sort of experience similar to that with our hip muscles? And, and see if we can like imagine those muscles just hugging just tightly around the bone, just gripping them so tight. And can we just relax and let go? So give it a shot. Let's see what does that feel like if you were just to let go and step into a place, no resistance, a place of ease, even in discomfort. Comfortably uncomfortable is what we talk about a lot in our yin class. <laughs> I miss my yin, yin party, by the way. We all have such a nice time in our own classes together, but um, I'm having a great time with you guys. Hope you are too. Mm, come back up slowly. Good time. Get on your breath. And when you're ready, same thing. Straighten out the legs, oh my pillow, achy breaky at first. And then shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Maybe just massage your around your kneecaps a little bit. Give yourself some, some love, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna come into our frog pose and we're gonna hold that little baby for five minutes today. So that could pose some challenge, which is good. Let's welcome that challenge. Um, welcome that discomfort, of course, right? So come up onto all fours. And then we'll start by opening the knees out about as wide as your mat or so, and letting your big toes touch together. Right? And then let's just take a moment, sit back into your heels and walk your hands forward into an extended child's pose kind of variation, which I think they also call this same pose tadpole. Um, in practice. So this 
this is our starting place, and you're, I mean, honestly, you're just welcome to stay here if it's best for you. But I will start the five minute timer now as we begin to potentially progress in the posture. So to move on, you'll bring your hips up over your knees, okay? And then you can stay here. This might be enough for you, or you're gonna, and you're gonna start to slide your knees further apart until it is enough for you. Um, and this is still with the big toes close together, okay? So you can stay like this, or, and you, maybe you didn't lower to your forearms, maybe you stayed up, but if you can, bring your forearms down onto the floor or even down onto your brick or your book, you know, some, some kind of in-between place. Then you go deeper, you're gonna open up your feet and flex your little toes toward your knees and start to slide the ankles. So you've got your little froggy feet. I'm gonna slide your ankles um, so that they're right behind your knees and you're gonna feel that sensation increase. So if you need to a little bit, you can tip your hips slightly forward if you need just a little less intensity. Um, but otherwise, right over the hips, and it's gonna be, you'll have maximum gravity on your side to, to really get deep into the stretch with the hips right over the, the knees. So now, you know, some people like to take a bolster here and slide it underneath. I just have something to kind of get cozy around. Maybe you can, you know, it's comfortable for you to come all the way straight down onto the ground um, with the arms extended. If it's a little too intense to extend both arms out forward, you can bend one arm and put the forearm, I mean the forehead on the forearm. And then after a little while, you can switch your arms. And so, Lots of options. We've got three more minutes here. So good job. You're already almost halfway through. And you can just do your best to relax here. What is maybe working or tensing or tightening that doesn't need to? A lot of times it's the shoulders, it's the neck, the jaw the eyes, I do a lot of the eyes squinching, forehead kind of squinching up for no apparent reason, so I practice softening that space often. Even in my daily life is when I'm just like driving my car, you know. I always tell my friends, I remember when my kids were little and I was like really concentrating on something, but, you know, thinking about that, like my thinking face on. I remember looking at me and being like, Mom, why are you making that face? And like, wow, what face? And they were like, you know, this crunched up face. I was like, oh, all right, good to know. Um, and so just, you know, noticing in all these different moments and all these different things that we're doing, whether we're washing the dishes or you know, soaking in a hot tub, really relaxed, but are we really relaxed, right? Are we aware, are we being present? We're really, really present, we're really noticing what's happening, and we're able to really um, drop into the moment that much more, right? You can just really be like, a, how do I want to be in this moment? Can I relax a little bit more, right? Can I just really soften into the sounds of this moment, soften into the smells, the feels, just the overall experience of this moment right here. And you got just under a minute to go. You're doing great, just stick with it. If it's gotten to a point it's too much, remember just to back off. You can start to bring those big toes closer together.
you can inhale through your nose. Let it exhale out your mouth. Nice work, you made it. You're gonna start to bring your feet closer together now. You need to walk yourself up, your hands press underneath the chest to help bring you up. And then when you go to slide your knees together, you might feel stuck for a second. That's okay, just slowly but surely slide the knees closer together. And just nice and close together. And then let the hips shift back into in child pose position. Um, you can put your forehead down on something or maybe it'll go all the way to the floor. Bring your arms at your side, relax your shoulder. shoulders press yourself up we're going to come into a toe squat so we're going to give our feet some love these feet that we you know walk around on all day or cram in with uncomfortable shoes or um, whatever it might be and these small little these little guys aren't so big compared in comparison to the rest of our body for what they actually do for us and we tend to forget to nurture um, our feet and our toes so let's do that now Come forward and tuck your toes under and start to slowly sit back. So really, you know, really pay attention to what your honest edge is here. Um, you might not go very far back before you go, oh, that is intense. And then just, just pop to it where it's just right. So you're going to reach back and I like to just grab onto the little baby toe because a, a lot of times it gets left out and I want it to be a part of the party. And bring that baby in. So at this point, if you feel okay, you can bring your hands up. You can just be here, just sitting on your um, heels, comfortable breathing, core. And if you're hearing you start to feel like it's too much, just back off, no big deal. You certainly don't want to overstretch or overdo it. So from here, if you if you feel okay, you're sitting all the way upright, your arms are free to do something, interlace your fingers, flip your palms forward, slide the shoulder blades toward one another on your upper back, and then start to let the palms reach up to the sky. And pull your ribs in, so you're kind of tractioning the spine. So rather than arching, doing a big arch, I don't know if you can see with the sun around, but um, I'm doing like a big arch like this. You're actively pulling the ribs in to le and lengthening um, through the spine. Good. And then you can flip the palms and tuck the chin and just very lightly place the hands on the back of the head and just let the elbows drop. And don't let the shoulders droop forward. Keep the chest lifted and just stretch the neck. the hands down. Good. And untuck your toes. Nice work. Tap out the feet. Just feel all that awesome energy awareness. Good. And then as you're ready, you'll sit back onto your heels. Um, so if this is not okay for your knees, you might just need to skip this all together. Um, you can use a blanket underneath your knees right here. Sometimes that takes the pressure off. Um, if your ankles are really tight, you can put the blanket so that your feet kind of fall off the edge of the blanket so that the ankles don't get quite as much stretch, okay? So just, the first step is just to try to sit back and be okay. And then if you are, hands on the floor, see if you can start to lift your knees up. And then you wanna really lift your chest up here, kind of draw that low belly in, chest is lifted, right? And if you still feel okay here, maybe you just play with a little bit of balance, Good. Good here. A few more breaths. Not staying for too long, and certainly coming out if it is causing pain. Please just skip it. Good. And slowly 
you can release the knees back down. Good work. Nice. When you're ready, you can come up to a tabletop position. You're going to step your feet back toward a plank and then just lift your hips up to downward facing dog. And take your gaze forward, bringing your right knee up to your right wrist and your left knee down. So in the end, they call what we traditionally call pigeon or half pigeon um, swan and sleeping swan. So that's what we're doing now. So you're going to see if your knee will allow you to have your foot flexed to protect your knee. And then if your knee will allow, you start to crawl that ankle more forward. Got a little dog obstruction here. And you can start to crawl that ankle more forward until it is parallel with the front of the mat. But holy moly, my body is just like a little too tight for that madness. Um, and then I like to lift the back knee up and just kind of let the weight go back and settle into it a little bit deeper. Right, so if you need, just have the heel in closer to your body, that front heel. Right? And then you inhale. And you come up a little bit, maybe you're on bricks, maybe you can have hands on the foot. Just come up any amount that feels good. This is going to start to make you also feel that really strong awareness through the front of your left hip. So that's nice when you come up into this variation, uh, back bend, heart opening, and you get that nice um, hip flexor and quadricep stretch. Good, and then from here, you'll exhale and start to fold forward over the leg and you'll feel that stretch switch pretty noticeably probably to that outer right hip. Um, and then just, you know, maybe make a pillow of some sort in your forehead. Enjoy it. Um, real quick, if you do need a modification for this position, you could sit to your right hip and stagger that left knee in and fold, or you can come to your back for your figure four stretch. So right ankle crosses over left knee, and you would hug that left knee in. So those are a couple modifications that will help you um, still get that nice external rotation for your hip. Yeah. Nice stretch for the piriformis. is usually the time, one of the many times I would be coming around to give you a nice little massage and have some essential oil scents kind of floating around and um, just a little shoulder and neck squeezes, a little bit of lower back blow. Um, so maybe just you can imagine if that's happening right now and you could just let the the way your body would react in that situation um, happen even though it's not really happening. But knowing that I wish it was because I would love to be there offering you um, sweet little little touches of love to just help you go deeper and relax and enjoy your practice.
you had to take an option, which means at the last minute, or walk yourself back up toward your swan, and maybe you stay here, maybe you go toward what they call the screaming swan, which is to bend the back knee, and then take that left arm and circle it around hand grabs foot. That might be enough for you right there, or you'll start to just pull that heel in toward your body, and I don't know if that feels good for you. Keeping the chest lifted, and not sitting over onto this right butt. So if any, if you need to, you can tuck something underneath that right hip, um, which you could have done at the beginning. I'm sorry, I failed to mention that too. should feel nice. Maybe pedal it out a little bit, bending one knee and then the other. Then maybe pause, really anchor your hands down, straight arms, straight spine, reaching the heels down and back as far as you can. You're just kind of noticing the difference between the two sides of the body. Good. And now when you're ready, left knee comes up to left wrist. Right knee lowers down. Walking your hands in to lift your chest up. Making those little adjustments. Left foot flexed. Maybe the back knee lifts and shift back a little bit. And you start to walk this foot up a little bit more. And, then, and the left knee kind of goes out to the side. And you're just staying in this upright position. Back toes untucked, pointed straight back. Good. And then you try to let the breath carry it all the way down into the lower belly. And you feel this experience that your torso is just like so alive with breath. And a lot of times we think about the breath and the experience of the breath is happening in just the front body. We talk about the belly, the ribs, the chest. But can you notice, can you feel, can be in the experience of your breath in your back body as well? You kind of feel the, the ribs, the back ribs, the lower back, the upper back. Just kind of widen the awareness of your breath. And then when you're ready, start to fold forward. So again, if you need something underneath that left hip, go ahead. If you need to modify, lay on your back, cross your left ankle over your right knee, taking a figure four stretch or eye of the needle stretch. This other nice little um, reading that I'd like to share with you. Appropriate also for this time, I feel like. It's called This Too Shall Pass. Some of you may have done the 21 um, day abundance meditation challenge um, from the Deepak Chopra Center. Um, so you'll be familiar with this reading, but I Every time I read it, I like it. So hopefully you do too if it, if it is something that you've already been um, exposed to. This too shall pass. There was a king and he once said to the court sages, 
I have a ring with one of the finest diamonds in the world, and I want to hide a message under this stone that can be useful in a situation of extreme despair. I will give this ring to my heirs, and I want it to serve faithfully. Think of what kind of message will be there. It must be very short to fit in a ring. The sages knew how to write treatises, treatises sorry, but did not express themselves in one short sentence. They thought and thought, but did not come up with anything. The king complained about the failure of his venture, venture to a faithful old servant who raised him from infancy and was part of the family. The old man said to him, I'm not a sage, I'm not educated, but I know such a message. For many years, I spent in the palace. I met a lot of people. And once, I served a visiting mystic whom your father invited. And he gave me this message. I ask that you don't read it now. Save it under the stone and open it only when there's no way out at all. So the king listened to the old servant. So tell you real quick option, if you'd like to come up into that screaming swan, you can bring yourself up or maybe just up into the swan and then bend the back thing for the last event. After some time, the enemies attacked the country and the king lost the war. He fled on his horse and his enemies pursued him. He was alone. His enemies were many. He rode to the end of the road. There was a huge, deep cliff before him. If he fell there, it is the end. He could not go back as the enemies were approaching. He already heard the clatter of their horses' hooves. He had no way out. He was in complete despair. I slowly releasing whatever um, variation you have here and making your way once more to downward facing dog and just pedaling it out a little bit. Enjoying that. And then bringing the knees down softly and close together, shift the hips back. And your choice now if you want the arms extending forward or the arms extending back. And just relax. And then he remembered the ring. He opened it and found an inscription. This too shall pass. After reading the message, he felt that everything was quiet. Apparently the pursuers got lost and proceeded in the wrong direction. Horses were no longer heard. The king was filled with gratitude to the servant and the unknown mystic. The words were powerful. He closed the ring and set out on the road. He gathered his army and returned his state. On the day when he returned to the palace, they arranged a magnificent meeting, a feast for the whole world. The people loved their king. The king was happy and proud. An old servant came up to him and said, softly, even in this moment, look at the message again. The king said, now I am a winner. People are celebrating my return. I'm not in despair, not in a hopeless situation. Listen to this old servant, the servant answered. The message works, not only in moments when everything is bad, but also in moments of victory. The king opened the ring and read, this too shall pass. And again, he felt a silence fall over him. Although he was in the midst of a noisy dancing crowd, his pride dissolved. He understood the message. He was a wise man. And then the old man said to the king, do you remember everything that happened to you? Nothing and no one, nothing and no feeling is permanent. As night changes day, so moments of joy and despair replace each other. Accept them as the nature of things. Accept them as the nature of things, as part of life. This too shall pass. This moment.
here, this you know, crisis, pandemic that we're going um, through in the world, right? And just holding up that hope for the rainbow after the storm, amidst, amongst, right? Finding the rainbow, seeing the lights in the middle of the rain of it all. From here, you could just slowly bring yourself up. And then I just gently sit over to one side and allow your feet to go straight up in front of you. Inside your seat out from underneath you. So, a couple modifications. If your hamstrings are really tight, sit up onto the edge of a blanket or bolster like we said at the beginning of class. Um, and then secondly, if they're really, really tight, you can take one of your little blanket roll or bolster thing and place it underneath the backs of the knees. So that's a good helpful way to support your forward fold as well. Okay, so it sees out from underneath you. If you have lower back issues, like we talked about at the beginning of class, you'll keep your back straight and you'll just go as far as you can, keeping your back straight, your pelvis tipping forward, never tipping them back, okay? And then, so from here, if you feel good, then you can just allow your spine to round forward. You can relax your feet, relax your head down, you let your arms be comfortable along your legs. Maybe you, um, you know, prop your elbows on your legs and hold your head in your hands or any, anything really that you want. If you want to pile a bunch of stuff up to, to rest on, you can. If you're more flexible and you need a little bit more, um, challenge here, then you could open your feet up, I mean, yeah, your legs, your feet up just a little bit, and so then you could have some space to be able to kind of pull your torso more between your legs. Dropping your head forward and again. Um, as we fold forward, we're helping to calm the nervous system. So this is obviously highly beneficial. Um, so anytime that you know maybe you're fe feeding that wolf of anxiety and despair and fear um, in this challenging time. Um, Take a forward fold. I mean, it doesn't really matter where you are. You can allow yourself just to fold forward, just to breathe, like, you know, or, or even just that. Just take a few moments to just sit down and breathe, to close your eyes, right, and to just practice a little bit of self-soothing, a little bit of calming, right, and not let that kind of tornado sweep you up and out of control. Um, the tornado being the mind that likes to get us all hyped up. Um, right, so, and the mind that is feeding the, the wolf, right? The wrong wolf. So let's take a couple more minutes here. Or not a couple more minutes, actually, 45 more seconds. And again, maybe you could just imagine and you're going to come and just you know, walk my thumbs and fingers up your back, up your spine, and give your shoulders a little squeeze, your neck a little squeeze, kind of slide my hands in opposite directions along your back, check, and so allow yourself to relax even more. So relax so almost forgot to pay attention to the time. <laughs> it works, people. Um, slide your hips forward and then lower down onto your back when you're ready. 
Plant your feet flat onto the ground and just for a moment take a real gentle baby bridge. Just lifting your hips up just about halfway, not all the way that you normally maybe would. And then exhale and softly lower the hips back down to the ground. Bring your knees into your chest. Let your arms drop out to T and guide your knees over to the right. And so we could be here kind of in this gentler variation, or if you'd like um, a different variation, straighten your right leg, right hand guides the left knee across, and coming into this reclining twist. So your choice um, knees together is typically a little gentler on the lower back. So whichever one really serves you. And try to have your shoulders relaxed on the ground. So if your left shoulder is lifted, right, then maybe just see if you can scooch over to the right with your upper body a little bit. Right, and then let that left shoulder just drop down. Turn your gaze over toward your left hand. Maybe close your eyes. And take one more minute here, breathing, breathing deeply, each breath inviting you to relax into the twist a little bit deeper, so healing, so cleansing. So, for those of you who have never been to my studio, the Yoga Hut, the dogs pop the little screen, the staples up the screen, and just made their own little doggy dog um, on the barn door. Maybe I'll show you. Bring the knee, that's Buddha, by the way. Bring the left knee back up, or both knees back up, and placing the foot down. Buddha, come. Please don't knock it out. And readjust your hips and your shoulders and hug your knees up to your chest. And then either both knees at the same time off to the left or your left leg straight and then left hand guiding the right knee across. Okay, three minutes. Same adjustment, you know, maybe you scoot your shoulders a little bit over to the left of your upper upper torso. Right, gaze into your right. I'll show you guys real quick. Okay. 
this is. So that's the little screen door. And just at the bottom there, the screen now just flaps because <laughs> they busted through it. <laughs> but it's okay, it works. Dogs like yoga too, you know. Two more minutes here. But I just really, uh, you know, appreciated in that, in that reading, in that whole story, um, was how, just the reminder of how important it is um, to be present, right? And to be so grateful for those times that are so joyous and, um, victorious and celebratory um, and because they will pass, right? They're not permanent, nothing is permanent. Um, and so to, and, and just as, and then when we're in these, you know, kind of darker times, more challenging times, um, whether it be, you know, with raising young kids or within our marriage or at our job or in the world, whatever the struggle or the challenge might be that we're meeting, um, to, to have the strength and the courage, right, to, con to, to feed that, the wolf that we really want to feed, and to recognize there still can be this opportunity to choose joy and to choose gratitude, to still just be grateful for everything that you have. So in this moment where you might feel a little bit in despair, like you've lost everything, Take a moment to just be so grateful, right, for, you know, that hopefully the health that you have, or this body that you're, that you're in right now, um, the roof over your head, it, I mean, it's once you start that gratitude ball rolling, it just wants to keep rolling, it's really an awesome thing, um, so. In those those times and and just to remember in those dark times right this too shall pass when you're ready bring both knees back up knees into chest a little squeeze rock a little bit side to side then you take your head in the opposite direction if your knees go hold on to your knees with your palms and just make little circles around your sacrum. Nice little sweet little massage for yourself. And that lower back. Maybe try a little bit smaller circles. Maybe a little bit bigger circles. Just kind of playing with what really feels good for you. You should just feel nice and nurturing. Very loving. Take a circle of the opposite direction. Bigger, smaller, faster, slower, whatever feels good. Hugging in toward your chest. Good. And just a moment in happy baby. Let your knees drop off to the sides, holding onto your feet. Now in our yin practice, you can let the hips come off the ground, or you can keep that lower back down on the ground. Unless flexion is not allowed in your spine, then please keep the backs of your hips flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. Let's take a minute here before we come into our final resting pose. So again, you know, sway a little if you want. You can see how it feels, you know, if it's okay in your body to 
kind of pull the hips away from the floor and the knees farther down toward the floor. You can see what, how it changes to pull the backs of the hips back down. If you're more open, more flexible, you could start to straighten the legs out toward the side. And when you're ready, release the feet and hug your knees into your chest. Round your forehead up to your knees. Just give yourself a nice little round there. And then when you're ready, extending your legs long. Final resting pose. Good, adjusting your, your hips and your shoulders underneath you. So you've got the, maybe you went and, you know, maybe prepared a little roll. So you're welcome to place it right underneath the backs of your knees. That's kind of a nice thing to do to help your lower back especially relax more. Um, you could also take the weight of, of a blanket or a towel or something just to, over the tops of the hips feels kind of nice and soothing. When you're ready, your arms are at your sides. Palms are facing up. Pinky toes are just dropping open out to the sides. The shoulders are falling completely into the floor. No hesitation. Nice deep breath all the way to your toes. Let the breath out the mouth from the toes up. And just allow yourself these next few minutes to completely relax. Relax the toes. Relax the bottoms of the feet. Tops of the feet. The ankles. Relax the lower legs. in the low belly, back. relaxing ribs and middle of the back, relaxing the chest and the upper back. Fingers, fingertips. Relax the neck. Relax your jaw, tongue, teeth, lips. Relax the nose, cheeks, ears. Relax your eyes, eyeballs, the eyelids, the eyebrows, the space between the eyebrows. Relax your forehead, the temples. 
relax your brain. Relax your scalp. Relax the back of the head. Top of the head. Whole body completely relaxed. Just relax. Just relax. Toes. Stay nice and relaxed. Maybe your eyes stay closed. Stretch your arms overhead for a long body stretch if that feels good. Lean back slowly, peacefully. Noticing how you feel without any judgment or ego involved. Ready? You can curl your knees in. Cozy up on the right side, beautiful position. It's uncomfortable. Take your time to rise up to seated. Press in the backs of the hands on the knees, palms facing up. inner battle that's going on, right? Which wolf is, is stronger in this moment? Which, which wolf have you clearly fed? And you can continue to feed that joyous wolf of love, compassion, empathy, faith, and hope uh, as we continue through this this time in our lives that too shall pass. May it pass quickly. And may we remain grateful for what we do have every moment. Bring your hands together to heart, bowing and thanking yourself for taking this time on your mat. 
and I thank you so much for sharing this time with me, sharing practice with me.